Hi everyone, I have got a special treat for you today. This has been one of the most highly requested collaborations for the channel to date. And today's video is going to be with Matt Reilly from Dude Candle. If you've been around this channel for a while, you know that I've done a, a product testing review on the channel of Matt's candles with Dude Candle about two years ago. It was one of the first ones I've ever done. And since then, I've stayed in contact with Matt quite a bit. And uh, I actually had the privilege of being out in California on one of my recent road trips and stopped by and had a conversation with Matt. And we actually went as far as recording an entire collaboration. I was there for a couple hours. Uh, we went to dinner, recorded a lot of content. And then, as many of you are aware, on that way back from that road trip, uh, my vehicle was broken into and everything was stolen. So unfortunately, with all my equipment, we also lost all of the footage. So that has obviously delayed this video. However, I have to throw major kudos to Matt because he has taken the time to help recreate, and when I say help, mostly recreate all of the content that uh, was stolen. And then pieced it all back together, and we are now ready to share this video. So, this is probably going to be the last of me you see in this particular video. I wanted to provide a brief introduction, tell you what was coming, and I'm going to let Matt run the rest of the show. So, he did an excellent job with uh, re-recording the content and going through his entire workflow and processes again. In this interview, he's going to be showing you behind the scenes, talk about his origins, his workflow, branding, advertising, web and design, shipping, all the lessons learned, and some tips for everyone else that's getting involved in this business. And you get to hear from his story of how he got started to where he is today, and I think you're gonna find it extremely fascinating. So again, a big thank you to Matt for putting this all together, and I hope you really enjoy today's video. If you do, please let us know in the comment. Give some thanks to Matt again. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know by giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's jump right in. This is Matt, and he's going to take it away from here. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Reilly. I'm the owner of Dude Candle. I want to thank Wade for this opportunity to do this collaborative video here, give you a little insight about my company, the business, what I built, uh, where it's going, uh, how I got here, uh, what are my roses, what are my thorns, uh, maybe lessons I've learned and maybe some insight that might be helpful for you in your candle business or even any business you might be starting up. Um, to start with, I've never been a big candle guy. Um, it's not like my house had a candle in every room. But a few years ago, uh, one fall night, I wanted to have a candle and I wanted something masculine scented in the house. So I went up to the local store and browsed the aisle and everything they had was sort of feminine. It was the... Uh, lilacs and the flowers and the meditation bath scents and all all those crazy scents and nothing for guys and it kind of occurred to me that this might be something i could make out of my own home and uh do a little side hustle because i was trying to come up with some sort of idea anyway and uh make candles for guys so i spent the next six months learning the craft of candle making uh failed miserably on a lot of it as we all do when we first start um, probably went through 100, 200 candles that were just sort of epic failures, sinkholes, wicking issues, fragrance loads, all those things that we all have to contend with when we're first developing a candle. But once I finally had that done, uh, I was ready to launch my product line. I'm giving you the shortest story here, but I launched the line on D-Day, June 6, 2020. And uh, the minute my first ad broke on Facebook, uh, I was absolutely overwhelmed. Um, I was completely unprepared for the influx uh, and responses that I got from, from my product line. So I literally had to shut down my operation, take the next 30, 45 days, and rethink everything I was doing from a candle making uh, workflow, if you will, from manufacturing to packaging to getting it out the door. I had all that kind of done, but I didn't expect the influx and the volume that came with that initial ad. So I kind of retooled my process and then I relaunched my ad and then the rest is history. Uh, here in uh, July of 2023, we're obviously just past my three-year mark. So in 2020, the first six months uh, grossed 11000 and I just paced myself very carefully just to kind of see if I could handle the workflow and, and what needed to be done um, because uh, I knew the holidays would be there and I didn't know what kind of uh, demand that would put on me. So that was a learning curve. And then the next year was my first full calendar year. And I grossed just about, what's my number say, about just under 60, call it 59,000. The next year, grossed 75. Here we are in uh, 2023, and uh, for reasons that I cannot understand, I'm up 60% even up through July with this incredible heat wave we're having. I'm up 60% this year. If things hold together and the economy holds together, uh, it's very likely I will grow six figures at the end of this calendar year. And that's really, really exciting for me. But here's the real kicker. 
Uh, this is something nobody knows. It's all being done out of an 11 by 15 master bedroom in a townhome. Um, so I currently manufacture two size candles, an eight ounce amber jar and a 16 ounce amber jar. Um, that's the primary uh, base of my business. Uh, I offer wax melts, which I didn't think would be a seller, but I've had a few requests for them and I thought, well, let's give it a shot. And they've been phenomenal. Wax melts have been great. I currently don't offer it, but I'm in development for uh, car air fresheners and reed diffusers. Um, that'll be coming really, really soon. Uh, but my primary focus and the base the bulk of the business comes from the candle sales themselves. So the process, like anybody else, everybody else has their own uh, process. We'll look behind me here. And this is sort of my work counter, uh, which is right behind me. And this is where all the production gets done when I'm manufacturing candles. Um, just like anybody else, you take the jar, um, wick them and then I position the candles within the, these grids. I don't know if you can see it on the camera here. Um, position all the jars, uh, fill them, and then this grid serves a purpose because once the jars are filled, I put a box over the top of them so they can cool overnight. And uh, so this grid helps me just get everything where it needs to be so the boxes will uh, rest on top of the candles the way they should. Wade, on one of his videos, had been talking about Norden Candle Supply and making wick holders. And I have to tell you, that is a really, really uh, big game changer for me and for what I do in my business. Um, I used to make my candles and I used to use bag clips to hold the wicks across the top of the jar. And uh, for starting out, sure, that's fine. But you know, you got a bag clip here and then you have to visually align it, make sure it stays centered, make sure it doesn't get bumped when you're uh, putting your, pouring your wax and then when you're covering it. Um, so finally, uh, reached out to Norton Candle Supply, had a very specific design request. They were able to accommodate me. And now I'm using uh, their wick centering tools, which allow me to dead center the wicks where they need to be. I'm using the wick uh, uh, holders on the top, which cons consistently hold the wicks exactly in place where they need to be. And I gotta say, this has really, really elevated my production. So no matter how tired I am when I come home, there's no little cheat guide I have underneath the, the jar to help me position the wicks where they need to be. These things are just amazing. And so I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you, Wade, for covering these. And thank you, Norton Candle Supply, for producing these. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, she was able to make them in my, my brand colors, which is sort of a brown and an orange, which you can see here, which nobody's going to care about except me. But it puts a smile on my face every time when I can come home and drop my wick in and it's dead center. Um, really, really happy about that. So I gotta say that that was something that uh, I spent a couple thousand on this year and uh, hundreds of these in stock to make sure candle production goes really, really smooth. It's made a huge difference and I just felt it was proper to give them a shout out because this is something worth investing if anyone's really serious about high volume candle production. When, when I'm in production, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've got eight grids here that I can use for uh, candle manufacturing. So I can produce anywhere from, you know, if I wanted to do just 20 a night, it'd be super easy. But like any candle maker knows, once you kind of get in the rhythm, uh, you can probably produce, you know, a couple hundred a night. So this is really, really helpful for me to have this sort of space up here. Um, over here uh, is my wax melting uh, digi boils. Um, if you don't already use these or don't uh, know about these, I have to thank Wade for this because I saw these in the background of one of his videos and I had to ask him about this. And these are actually used for like uh, home brewing beer and they're extremely affordable. Uh, like a lot of us candle makers, I started with the small little tiny crock pot things, but you know, I was doing such a volume that uh, you know, having to refill it with wax all the time just became a nightmare. So discovering these were a huge, huge help in the candle manufacturing production. So this contains my wax for the candles. This contains the wax I use for the wax melts. And I fill the pitchers here, and obviously I just turn to my side over here, and this is where I pour all the candles. Once we work our way over here, um, this is where my shipping uh, setup is. Uh, Macintosh computer. Uh, I'm using uh, WooCommerce uh, as my e-commerce platform for processing uh, orders. Uh, my label maker for shipping. I got a scale over here, and I get a lot of people laughing about this, but this is the coolest thing in the world. 
because I'm working out of an 11 by 15 uh, space, I can't have a big footprint for uh, things in here. Everything has got to go up. That's why the wax melters are fantastic because I can get a lot of wax in here and they go up. It doesn't take up a lot of space. But I also needed what they call a hopper to hold my packing peanuts when I'm packing orders. So I put this little box together with a little sort of trap door. It's got a slope on the side. So I fill this with peanuts and when I'm packing orders, I just open the trap door, peanuts fall out into the box packaging. So it makes uh, order fulfillment really easy. And right behind me here is this uh, rack system that I built that's just filled with cubes that house all of my inventory on candles with each cube containing a specific scent. So this is one here is going to be baseball. And this is going to have both the large and the small candles. This one's my barbecue, large and the small. Aged bourbon, the large and the small. So I've got a great visual reference of where my inventory levels are. And I always know where to get my candles when I'm packing orders. And all I have to do is reach behind me over here on the computer to grab my inventory and pack the orders and get them out the door. So that's the real process for me. It's the manufacturing, the melting, the shipping, and, uh, and, and of course, you know, the inventory, keeping the inventory up. Obviously with fall coming up, that's gonna be the biggest time of the year for candle production. So I'm gonna to have to create a lot more candles and keep that excess inventory in the hallway and downstairs. But you know what? I'm not paying for a storefront, so I can live with that. First of all, just for anybody who doesn't know, uh, I first became introduced with Wade. Uh, it was either because of the Digi Boils, but he also did a uh, product review on, on my candle. And Wade really picked up on my branding. So, and you can find that video on, on his YouTube channel. Um, but if you know my product line and you look at the website, you're going to see that I'm a real stickler about branding. And I'm going to expand on that a little bit. But first thing I'm going to talk about is just the look and the feel. From the website to the boxes that the candles come wrapped in, to the tissues that wrap around the jars, to the labels on the jars, to every piece that's a touch piece for the consumer, and anything that's visual, there's a consistency in there uh, between the fonts and the colors and the styling and the logos. Everything is, is, is pretty well organized, and I'm pretty proud of that. Everything is cohesive. And so there's a uh, consistent feel for the consumer as they as they go through the whole experience from just the visual online to they get the box and they open it and they see the safety card or a gift card that's inside to the box packaging and they open the box and they pull the jar out and the jar's wrapped in a tissue and the tissue's got my branding on it and then they get down to the jar itself and that's got my branding on it and so I think I've done a really good job of kind of creating that experience for the consumer and there's probably always room for improvement but right now I'm, I'm really proud of that. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what those elements are that I've done for my branding. So let's work from the outside in. Um, every candle comes packaged in a dude candle box. It's got a nice little label on the front. I made a universal box that's blank on the front that allows me to position a uh, craft label on the front that identifies uh, the scent of the candle. Um, logos all around. Uh, you'll see I use a certain black and, and a gold trim. I try to carry that theme through labeling, packaging, uh, any visual media that I use on products, even on social media ads and uh, banners on the website, I try to use the trim. So again, there's cohesion in everything that I do. Uh, little stories on the side, little information about the company. To be honest with you, I won't get into it here, but it's just a nice entertaining read, even a little funny statement on the bottom of the box for those who decide to look at the bottom, and believe me, they do. I'm paying attention to every little detail. Once you get into the box, all the candles are wrapped inside of a nice little tissue and with the Dude Candle logo sitting dead center right on the top. So when you open the lid, this is the first thing you're gonna see. Those tissues look like this, primarily. There's the fun little factoids and little things that are a little bit more masculine oriented, but it's definitely fun for everybody. Um, I have two different versions of the tissue, um, just because I can, and I never know what candle's gonna have which version of the tissue, but you know, it's there. Um, adds a nice little touch. Every order comes with, of course, a safety card like uh, anybody else would do. A little information about the company because I want people to understand who I am and, and what I do. Here's some safety guidelines. And the last one is always be polite. It's not a safety issue, but it's just good advice. And a little bit of information about the company on the back side. Occasionally, once in a while, a customer may, uh, more than often, to be honest with you, this is going to be a gift for somebody. Um, so I offer uh, for free. Anybody who places an order online can get a gift card. It's just a simple two-sided card, uh, special gift for you, dude. 
and then with the to and from message on the back so they can fill that out. And it kind of elevates that sort of gift giving experience for the whole dude candle thing. And it comes with a uh, parchment uh, envelope as well. And on occasion, I may want to correspond with a customer personally because they placed a big order, or they had a question or uh, made a comment when they placed the order and I want to follow up with them. I don't use these all the time, but it's a nice touch. Just a quick note from Matt, a little bit of room on the backside so I can uh, jot down a little message for that customer. So as you can see between the box packaging, the box packaging, the tissue, and you know, again, even the, the labels uh, on the jar themselves and all these touch points, again, I try to stay really, really consistent with the branding. And the last thing is on the bottom of every jar, rather than use a standard warning label, I have my own Dude Candle version. It's got my logo on it, it's got the Dude Oath, and all the safety rules for caring for your candle. So obviously, you can see here, everything that I'm doing is about reinforcing my brand, reinforcing my brand, reinforcing my brand. And to continue the thought on branding, I have to tell you, a lot of people think the branding of a company starts and stops with a look and a feel. Uh, of the touch points and the packaging. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I think branding goes beyond that and that's something a lot of people are missing out on. A lot of people uh, have to understand that branding is, I think is, an, is the experience overall that you have with something. For example, if you had a really good steak but you were at the restaurant and you had horrible service and your table was sitting right next to the restroom I would say that that brand is tarnished. I would say that you're not going to walk out of there going, I'm going to do this again. So um, when I'm thinking about branding, I want to think about the user experience through the entire process. That's from looking at the product online, the messaging that they're reading, how's the checkout experience, how's the order delivery, and how's that package received, and what's it going to look like when they open up the package. So um, I hate to go on about this, but I think that's really, really important. And one of the things that I'm kind of proud of is uh, it took a lot of work was to do a really uh, in-depth uh, uh, SMS text messaging service for uh, people who place orders and they want to know their order status. Now, a lot of companies, I'm sure we've all done this, you know, you place an order online, you sign up for the messaging and, um, you know, you'll get a text message that says your order is complete and you're going, okay, what does that mean? Does that mean you just took my money, does that mean you shipped the product? Does that mean it's on my doorstep? I don't know what that means. You know, and the next message you may get is say your order is delivered. Um, so I really kind of went above and beyond on my SMS text messaging service. And it currently works great on my uh, current web platform. Um, don't know about the next one I elevate to. But currently when customers place an order, first thing they're gonna get is a message saying, hey, your order was received. Next message is gonna say, it's boxed and on the way to the post office. Hey, the post office is in possession of this. Here's your tracking information and your estimated delivery date. Hey, this box is now out for delivery. And the last one is, hooray, your package has been delivered. My customers have been raving about that because who doesn't love to get a package? And let's face it, candles are fun. There's probably some level of excitement that customers have waiting for their candle to arrive. And this sort of communication really lets them know that I care and where their order is in the entire process moving through. So something like that I think is really important as part of my branding. Again, elevate that experience, make it as, uh, as beautiful and seamless as possible. And it might even be something they don't even comment on because they don't recognize how smooth it went. And but at the end of the day, they're gonna remember that and they're gonna remember your brand and that's why it's important to me. And taking it to another level, right over my shoulder here is my actual registered trademark for Dude Candle. I get asked a lot, is the registered trademark an important thing? Is it something every candle maker should have? Mm, for me, it mattered. Uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't at first. A friend had talked me into it and it was probably the best, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten because the brand has grown beyond what I expected it to. And now uh, the name has some protection. And it also adds value to my business should I decide to sell it, or I need to protect it, or somebody else with a dude candle tries to enter the marketplace, I have protection for my, for my brand. Now, is that something everybody should do? No, I can't say that. You gotta decide for yourself. But getting a registered trademark wasn't expensive. I think it was 600 bucks. It took about a year to 18 months to process, which is normal, um, but I was never so happy as when that thing arrived in the mail and uh, they actually said, yeah, Dude Candle is yours. Now, why does that matter? Well, I'm not currently on Amazon and part, part of that problem, part of the reasoning is simply 
I don't think I can handle the volume, um, at least uh, the way I'm running my business now. So, but if I were to be on Amazon, Amazon's got great protection for brands. So anybody out there, and we all know this, uh, there, there are companies out there that kind of use names within their product line. So there are other companies that make a dude candle within their existing product line. Um, if I wanted to be a bully on Amazon, I could actually say, hey, this is a trademark infringement. Um, I'm seeking protection and they will stop those other people from having a dude candle. So you could take this theory and apply it to yourself for whatever you're making. And if you really want that brand protection or you see a potential for this, this company that you're building uh, down the road may have some value beyond what you can envision today, it may be worth the investment. Um, you know, the nice thing about doing a trademark is you just, if you come up with the money and you do the filing, just, that's it, just file it and then wait. And, and uh, you know, a year to 18 months, hopefully they'll come back to you and say, hey, you're all good and you know your your trademarks done so in other words there's not a lot of follow-up to do just get the paperwork filed and wait and see what happens that's fairly easy to do i'm glad i did it it protects the brand from now and for the future first of all uh, i am a one-man show in every aspect um i am the scent developer i am the manufacturer of the candles um, i package them for shipping uh, everything is completely controlled by me. Um, I am a web developer, I am a photographer, I'm a videographer, I'm a graphic artist. So every touch point of the business, which is the packaging, the tissues, uh, the, the thank you cards, the, the gift cards, anything that's the visual aspect, it's, it's all me. Um, so I'm very fortunate to kind of have those multi-talents which really help me. So um, as an example, the website, um, I use WooCommerce. Um, that's a platform, a sort of an e-commerce uh, plugin, if you will, for a WordPress platform. I like it, works well for me. Uh, I spend about uh, 400 a year on it between all the additional plugins that I've added to kind of help enhance the website. Um, I could go to Shopify and I probably will at some point um, just because there is a little bit simpler ease of use with Shopify, but I give up some of the design controls, some uh, that I've really appreciated having with WooCommerce right now. Um, so being able to do all of that myself is really wonderful. Uh, it's also very torturous too, because that means any decision or anything that has to be done has to be done by me. Um, and I'm already short on time working a full-time day job and doing this after hours and on weekends. And you know, I, I had to give a lot, <laughs> as anybody knows, you have to give up a lot of your personal stuff. Uh, when you dedicate yourself to starting a side business and for me it's been my motorcycle which is my my zen my escape that allows me to uh, reset myself and those motorcycle rides have been lacking as of late and I've tried to merge my two passions together but that hasn't worked out but to have all those tools in this war chest to be able to create what I need to um, from the from every visual aspect of my business it's just been a really, 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 really helpful process in, in growing Dude Candle. I currently spend uh, 750 a month on my advertising. 600 of it goes towards Facebook, Instagram, and another 150 for Google. Um, a lot of things have changed in terms of trying to, trying to track uh, conversions and those who are running ads will understand you know uh, it's the ability to say yes you know somebody purchased from your ad it's getting a lot harder to do that but I have a general sense after doing it all this time where I can tell when the ad is effective and when it's not when it's performing and when it's not so I definitely think the advertising is helping I also think I'm spending more than I should and I need to spend a little more time fine-tuning those ads but right now my expenses are 750 a month and I gotta say, um, I'm not sure that the business would be here if I wasn't doing those ads. So uh, that's another thing that I think that's helped really grow the business. Uh, shipping right now, I use ShipStation, which connects directly to my WooCommerce website, um, downloads all the orders, and allows me to process uh, the orders through their interface. I like ShipStation, works for me, might be others out there, um, but it's affordable, it's smart, it's clever, it does exactly what I need to when I need, when I need it to. It does three things that I absolutely love. First one is presets, 
I already know that I get a lot of individual candle orders for either a 16 ounce or the 8 ounce candle. So I have a preset field that has the box dimensions and the weights and I just select that preset when I'm processing the order and it, it, and it knows exactly what the postage is going to be and kicks out the label. So the presets are really helpful. I get about six or eight combinations that I often go through that ShipStation has got it in the preset field. It's really, really nice. The other thing that ShipStation does, which is helpful, is uh, when processing orders, if a customer were to order multiple candles, uh, maybe two of the same, ShipStation will actually, uh, when you're reading down the list of what you've got a box in that order, anything that's in a multiple, it'll highlight in yellow and that quantity becomes bold. So if you're dog-eyed tired and you're trying to pack an order, uh, it's nice to go through ShipStation and actually vet what you're, what, what you're packing. And it's like, hey, don't forget, this customer ordered two of these things. Pack it. That's really, really nice. Another feature that ShipStation made really, really easy to use, and I don't use this often, but when I have to, it's, it's a blessing. And this just happened to me yesterday. Split shipments. If I've got a customer um, who's ordering 10, 12, 15 candles, which happens on occasion, um, sometimes uh, it can all go in one box. But there are other times it's cheaper for me and the customer to split that shipment up in two priority mailboxes instead. And so I can literally go into the interface with ShipStation, click split shipment, and select which candles are going to a separate box. And instantly um, I've got two uh, separate uh, uh, address labels and two uh, email confirmations that go to the customer. And the shipment is broken up into two shipments. It, it's just seamless. It works really, really well. So there's more I could go on about ShipStation, but, uh, and I'm not paid by them by any means, but I'm a real fan of it. It works really well. And like I said, it was seamless integration. And I think it's only 19 or 29 a month or whatever, um, but no more uh, having to use, actually I never had to, but at least you don't have to log into the USPS website and process your own orders or whatever. And ShipStation, I think, will link with all types of e-commerce platforms. So um, I like it. It works for me. It does exactly what I need to when I need it. Lessons learned. Um, it's going to be a little bit of an interesting. I don't know if this is going to be helpful or not. Um, little backstory. Uh, Dude Candle is not a full-time job for me. I already work full-time in the off-road industry. Uh, that's uh, side-by-sides, motocross, uh, off-road racing, Baja 1000, all that stuff you've ever heard of in desert racing and that kind of thing. That's my full-time job, Monday through Friday. Dude Candle is after hours. Uh, and on weekends. So I, it's all consuming uh, with, with every little bit of free time that I have, but it's worth it. And I think one of the things I want to share with anybody who's uh, starting a business, whether it's candle making or something else, is that you're going to learn a lot about yourself in this process. And I sure did. And I think that's probably one of the bigger takeaways for me in the business talked a little bit about manufacturing candles. I mean, that's just mechanics, right? You'll figure out a recipe, you'll know what it is, and then you replicate that for all your different scents. You'll get there. But I think anybody who's starting a business should be prepared that you're gonna face challenges and pressures that you haven't even thought of before. Um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but you're gonna discover really what you're made of. When you come home from a long day and you're tired and you don't wanna do anything, but you gotta give that side business 100% of your attention. You've gotta do it. Um, and it's that, that drive and that grit and that determination to push through when you're exhausted and you're tired and friends are inviting you out but you can't go. Um, or the weekend comes along, you've got great plans for your candle business but you're too tired to get halfway done with what you planned. I mean, you're just going to discover a lot about yourself. And I think that's what's been really amazing for me is educating my own self, discovering what I have inside of me to stay focused, to stay driven, to not give up the dream. And when things go wrong, just go, okay, things are going wrong and not take it personally and not quit. You've got to keep pushing through. You've got to keep being better. You can't let the things overwhelm you because the sweepstakes man isn't coming. No one's bringing a check to your door and the likelihood of winning the lotto is like zero. So if you want something, you've got to go after it. And that was one of the lessons that I had to struggle with and find that balance. So that was a big lesson for me. The mechanics, I can get through. The question is, for anybody else, is, is, is can you face those challenges and push through when you're really tired? You know, now another thing I'd like to share, um, kind of abstract, but I think it's important, is don't tell everybody 
everything you're doing. It's great if you're telling somebody you're starting a candle business, but I have learned over the years that telling them people too much information puts a certain level of expectation, and it may all be well-meaning, but there puts a certain level of expectation and pressure on you to perform and to get something accomplished that you had mentioned that you were gonna do. In my mind, I have found better peace with my business when I just kind of keep my mouth shut and focus on what I'm doing, and when I have something new to launch, boom, I drop it. But planting those seeds early can sometimes be overwhelming and it can keep you from focusing on what you need to focus on. So uh, for me, one of the biggest lessons is just do what you need to do. Find your pace in your business. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Sometimes we say, hey, next month I want to do this. And then you'll discover, oh man, there's problems. That's going to be three months down the road. Well, if it's three months down the road, it is. But you know what? It'll be perfect when you're done and when you, when you reach that point. So just kind of keep some things internally and just focus on what you need to do. You know your business better than anyone else. And sometimes sharing too much information is more problematic and it's not good for your mental health. It's not good for you to keep focused on the business. So keep some secrets. Those are the two takeaways that I've gotten. Well, everyone, I don't know what more there is to say. I could actually go on for another half an hour, an hour with business and philosophy and things of that nature, but I'm sure you all have better things to do. I just hope this little insight into what I'm doing here in a small 11 by 15 room and a part-time basis uh, inspires some of you and shows you what is possible. I'm sure for some of you who have a husband and a wife or a partner or somebody else can come together and you work as a team, you're going to probably be able to do a lot more and a lot faster. So I wish you all the best. Just stay the course. Keep pushing through. You know, remember why you got into this. Don't get emotional about the business. The business is the business. There are nights you want to do ABC, but the business demands MNO. You do MNO. Get over it. Success will happen alone. Failure is going to happen in front of everybody. That's just the way it goes. So enjoy the ride. You're going to learn a lot about yourself in this process as I did. And I think that's going to be one of the most exciting things ever is discovering what you're made of and what it takes to get through a problem and a crisis and situations and things you've never encountered and uh, how you persevere and how you push through it. So I just, I wish you all the best. So I'll stop talking now. I Wade, I really want to express my thanks for giving me this forum to kind of share a little bit of my business. Uh, for all those who are watching, thank Wade. And uh, we'll see you all real soon. Thanks. Bye.